Hello everybody and welcome to this video about the Yamaha 875 saxophones with my friend Mr Simon Bates and Mr Simon Bates, the world's largest 875 fan. So <laughs> I'm going to try and keep him under control and moderately sensible on this uh, review. But we wanted to just cover these because they've recently changed some of the things on the 875 and interestingly there's some differences between the alto spec and the tenor spec which is rare most uh, models tend to follow the same lines so uh, maybe a little bit uh, of you Simon first let's hear this alto and then we'll talk about some of the spec stuff <laughs> So, actually, before we even get onto the spec of this, your 875 is a couple of variants old, is that correct? It is, yeah. It's, it's the gold-plated version. So uh... He stuck that in, didn't he, quick? Yeah, <laughs> the gold-plated one there. Yeah, so this is the modern uh, 875. And so, interestingly, I'll just mention those specs. This now has the V1 neck, mm -hmm. which is the same neck they put on the H2Z, and that's the widest taper of all the Yamaha necks. So it's designed to give the, the biggest, fullest, you know, kind of sound. Yeah. Um, but it's not the same on the tenor. We'll get to that in a sec. Uh, 875's custom made to hand finished, hand hammered one piece bell. Uh, there is some ribs that run down the saxophone to give it some weight, some vibrance. But just from a playing point of view, then, Simon, a little bit about your experience with 875's and why you choose them and maybe how this new one feels compared to, to the older ones as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, each successive generation just seems to get better and better. Um, the, I, I started playing them in 1994, so I've got quite a history with, with them. Uh, and when I started on the, uh, 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 on the, the 875, um, it was a slightly different instrument. Still, it was, it was the best instrument I've ever, ever played, and I went straight from a Mark VI. Um, the, what I really liked about it was the control, the versatility, uh, but particularly the intonation. Mm. Especially, as I say, coming from a Mark VI, it's a, it's a, 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 a darker, um, more difficult saxophone to control. You know, people get some fantastic results from them, but I, this just worked for me, you know, yeah. the 875 immediately. But um, this latest incarnation has got some lovely, lovely little things that, you know, the, the, the octave mechanism, the octave key is just so comfortable. Uh, you know, there's nothing... Well, they've changed a few bits, it. haven't they? Mm, so they've they changed have. the right-hand side keys, yeah, left-hand oh, palms. Yeah. You know, they've actually done quite a bit on the layout, and that's mm -hmm. obviously with they go to people like Simon and other players around the world, and they and they get feedback and all the rest of it. So, yeah. but it's that comfort thing you've mentioned. They do feel very comfortable, and even for people who've had student Yamahas or mid-range Yamahas, Yamaha work really hard to make sure their pro ones sit very similarly um, yes, to those student course. ones, so you can make that yeah. transition. Cool, okay. Um, let's maybe have a try on the tenor and we'll just cover a little bit of the differences. Okay. Um, um, thank you, I shall take care of it. <laughs> and the mouthpiece. Um, just while Simon's doing that, Simon uses just, uh, this is a Maya on the altos, correct? Yeah, it's isn't a Maya it? 7. So I mean a very standard generic kind of mouthpiece in lots mm -hmm. of ways in that it's very versatile. So they, the ace fives work quite well from that point of view. So this is the tenor. Uh, we mentioned it has a different spec. It has the E1 neck, not the V1. Uh, and that's just a little bit closer in on the taper. Maybe towards having that more centered, rich sound that you might want on a tenor, mm. perhaps. There's other vibrancy within it. But let's have a little listen and see how we, see how we feel. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Uh, it's comfortable, it's lovely, yeah. it's just... It's the same with the alto, it does exactly what I expect it to do, exactly what I want it to do. And, and that's, the, that's the beauty of, of Yamaha as a brand, I think. You know, their, their saxophones, for me, are the most accessible that you can possibly get. Um, they and just I, do what they're supposed to do. Yeah, and I think it's that versatility as well sometimes, you know. So, yes, classical players can use 875s, jazz mm -hmm. players can use 875s, you could go and do a function band gig, you could do a concert band, you, you know, you can kind of do anything. You can, yeah, And wherever yeah. you might be in the world, mm -hmm. if something goes wrong with it, you can get the part, you know. It's those kind of seem like boring things, but actually, from a working player's point of view, I would imagine that's a very... Oh, yeah, complete godsend. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's a comfortable position to be in playing a, a, an 875, or indeed a, a Z, you know, you, you always know that um, it's, 
it feels it feels the same if I if I travel and have to hire an instrument in. Um, you know, I, I don't feel uncomfortable. No. Uh, well, we've done a little video as well about the 875 versus the H2Z we have, yeah. tenor, so you can mm -hmm. check that out. Um, but yeah, maybe let's give us a little bit more on the tenor to play us out. <laughs> ¶¶ 